right, we are live. Okay. Episode four. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode four of the Short Explanations Podcast. My name is Hyam. Tom is right there with Wired Ethernet. He's going to tell us about his Wired Ethernet. It is beautiful. Uh, it was a big, giant, two-week-long project. Uh, we've got seven rooms wired with Ethernet, Cat6 in the walls, um, four drops to each room. So each room has got an Ethernet panel with four plugins to it. Uh, and it's beautiful. Everything goes down to a mini rack uh, actually attached to my basement wall. So I've got network equipment in there, the cable modem, a battery backup. Uh, and it's all strung together with a PoE switch, so power over Ethernet. So if the power goes out, the, uh, the UPS kicks on and it will keep my network with Wi-Fi online for two hours. I mean, I did that when we moved into our house. We did a big job. I had the I had the Cat Five outside the window, and yeah, just, uh, outside from one window to the other, like out the basement through a hole all the way up to my office. And when we did a renovation on the house, um, I told them I need this. So while the walls were open and everything else, they got it. It is it is an amazing job if you can get wired ethernet to some of the rooms your tv entertainment center that's what you want to do it yeah. is unbelievable night and day difference like, yeah i know wi-fi 6e and all that and whatever mesh network you have but when you have directly wired and you don't have to worry about it and that's not to say that wi-fi isn't bad it isn't bad but when you can transfer files so quickly Oh, yeah. The one thing I didn't learn is if you're transferring a three or four gig file, like a whole video file, that's fast. But when you're transferring three or four gigs of photos, that's not necessarily faster. Yeah. So anyway, it's just, it's, no, it's great. You got that. It's, it's that's, that's one of the jobs I wish people would take a little more seriously or builders would put in, like mm. just put cat six or, I mean, I don't think you need fiber lines, but, I mean, why I got, not? If the walls are open, just do it. In, in Seattle, I got so spoiled uh, by my apartment complex. It was newer development. It was in Seattle. Uh, and it came pre-wired with Ethernet. There's just a patch panel in the back. I just hooked up a switch, hooked up the, the patches, and that, that was it. Uh, and so, moving here to an actual house... And it not having it, I had to fix it. I can't go back. I mean, you've heard me on the on the on the shows talk about my ubiquity setup and how to set it up. If you want something like that, you want us to explain what we're doing. Again, we have a signal group. Message us at the bottom of each description now because we control this. We have an email address. You can email us directly there, and you can find us. So that like. I'm loving the new, the new show and new everything and going from there. So our main topic today, we talked about the LastPass breach uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we wanted to follow up, or I wanted to follow up, of just passwords. Like, why do we have passwords? Um, I mean, we know why, but just some good things, some not so good things, what to do, what to, how to be better at it. And yes, it's going to delve into password managers and everything else, but just what are passwords and why do we need them? Well, generally, uh, you don't want people logging into your account. Um, it's to, uh, to control authorization and access. You can't just walk up to a bank and be like, yeah, I've got about three, four million dollars in my account. And then saying like, yeah, that makes sense. We will definitely let you withdraw that. Right. No one's going to take your word for it. So you need some sort of authentication and authorization in these systems. And that was the initial problem. I think somebody told me the original the original 1965 internet idea of passwords was just to bring over some some settings, some uh, like favorites of the the network operator that was using it. It wasn't meant to authenticate you. It was just trying to just say it was just trying to say who's using the computer at the time. It was segmentation. Yeah, and now it's. 
now now it's everything is so difficult with passwords that even we even me i get i get tremendously annoyed when something doesn't work uh i i still absolutely hate typing in passwords on uh on tvs when you have to use the remote it's absolutely the worst interface in the entire world it's that it's the nintendo switch at least oh and yeah. at least that has a touch screen but yeah and that's the problem you want to tell people to have what we're going to talk about long complex passwords but then you have to remember that they're going to type this on the tv <laughs> and yeah. that and it's just not there it's it's for everything you have to type your netflix password your hulu password every your disney plus everything on it and that's not fun so i don't know you wrote show notes which i can use later so you want to let's start with them yeah yeah so let's talk about the first thing why does everybody say you shouldn't reuse passwords across sites, right? Like, I, I know people, I was one of these people, uh, or very, very young, um, who had a password. Like, you know, I had like a regular password that I used everywhere, and then one that was like kind of better, and then like my email password, which was super serious. Um, but for everything else, it was just the same boring, like eight character password. Um, and the, the reason you don't want to do that is something that's come to be known as credential stuffing, uh, where basically if a website gets hacked and the, the passwords leak, uh, or somebody reverses hashes or, you know, there are ways to protect passwords in storage um, on like a database. Uh, but let's say that for some reason they get hacked in such a way where the plain text leaks out. If you've used that same password across all of these sites with the same username or the same email address, somebody's just going to go copy and paste that to the new site to see if they can get access over there. Um, it's basically they will use that one password to get into everything. And we've seen that. That, that has actually happened. Um, I think famously LinkedIn had a database breach back in 2005 somewhere there and i don't know five six years later mark zuckerberg's twitter got hacked using what we call like you said a credential stuffing attack it didn't matter because he wasn't tweeting at the time nor would he but people are doing that they have a list of all the banks they have a list of all the emails they it's it's trivial it's they just load it into the system and it says try all these and in five minutes, they can probably get a whole bunch of of positives, and they go from there. Oh, mm. they got a Gmail here. They got a uh, they got a bank here. What do they want to do with it? So credential stuffing and reusing the same passwords is a real problem. Yeah. So <clears throat> how do you even begin to tackle the problem of every single website? And there's a ton of websites that a ton of people use all the time, regularly. How do you even remember all of these different passwords for all of these different sites? Uh, some people like to employ a password scheme. Like they've got, you know, their basic, like my password one. Uh, but then they add like facebook.com at the end of it. You probably don't want to do that uh, because there's software out there that generates passwords to try uh, basically like the most popular password list it would generate that list and then variations of it if they know a good password like if they have leaked you know my password at site that got hacked.com um then they would try my password facebook.com uh, the the software is intelligent enough to put those things together to come up with basically password scheme defeat measures um, it's the same thing as the cred stuffing attack. There's just a couple extra steps involved, but it's basically the same thing. I mean, we, I, I used to tell people, because again, we talk about this. You're listening to the show because you have a vested interest. If you have the elevator, you have five seconds to tell somebody you have to explain this to somebody who doesn't want to listen to you what to do. I usually tell them, 
look, you need you do need a different password for every site. And the response is, well, how am I going to remember that? They don't want to hear about another piece of software. They don't want to hear about that. So I say, look, come up with three or four different passwords. And this is not good advice, but it's this is this is better advice than having one password. And here's your level one stuff. This is your Gawker stuff. This is the stuff that if it gets out, nobody really cares about. This is where you're posting on some fan forum, whatever it is. And if something happens, it happens that your level two stuff would be, would be somewhere, so something important. If it got out, it wouldn't be like the biggest deal, but you would want to change it. Level three would be so, like not mission critical, but it could be. And then all the way up, you make as many levels as you want for your passwords, your banking, your, your, your email. If that's really important to you, like my Gmail is deals with a lot of other stuff and getting me access and go from there. So, if, and obviously the, the more important it is, the less passwords you have in there. So if something does get hit and you have to change passwords, it's not that big of a deal. If someone, if Gawker got hit and you lost all your Gawker passwords, guess what? Nobody will care then either. They're still not getting into your email. Now they'll be able to post somewhere else, some naughty stuff that, okay, it's not the end of the world. And, and if you have to give your third level password to your spouse or to somebody, you know, you know what you're doing that you have to go change those, but it's a smaller subset and you go all the way up to that, that nuclear level five, whatever it is that only, you know, and if it gets out, that's a really big deal. Yeah. I think like financial sites, yeah. stockbrokers, et cetera. Um, so if you want to take the leap and, and try something, right? Like maybe you're not ready for a full-fledged password manager solution, which honestly I'm making it sound way scarier than it is. A, a password manager at its most simple and basic is it lets you put in the website like facebook.com and the username tom123 and my password, which is super secure, it's a hunter too. Um, and you just hit save. And then when you go to facebook.com and you see that login prompt, uh, most password managers will just automatically fill that in for you. You just hit go. Uh, it's really, really simple. But if you're not ready to install an extension or try out password managers, you know, properly as, as their own piece of software, both Chrome and Firefox and uh, I maybe Edge? I actually don't well, know about Edge. I just Chromium. Edge is Chromium, so it does have it. I do know it has it because yeah. we have it at work. But you can you can generate and save passwords in the browser. Um, and especially if you've logged into Chrome and you've got a Google account or you have a Mozilla account and you log into Firefox, those things can be synchronized across platforms. So you still have access to your passwords on your phone or another machine. So I want to piggyback off that. What I tell people is, well, before that, we made fun of this before the show. Uh, you go to the dollar store, there's a password book. And we all have laughed at that, like, really? And the answer is it's not so terrible at the sense that so, to, for someone to steal that, they need to be physically in your in your presence. It's not putting the, the difference between that and the post-it note under the keyboard or whatever it is, is because you're supposed to be taking care of this. So you're putting it in the desk drawer and locking it, or you are putting it in your bag and taking it home. You are managing it rather than having the passwords all over the, the monitor bezel. But if you're, if you're scared, just that's what it is. Start writing some of your passwords down, and I'll tell you to jump ahead of that because I know everyone listening to this already got it. And, and go from there. But the next step would be is download one, any of the password managers. If you want to use it built in, you want to use, uh, you want to use Bitwarden, Dashlane, whatever else, put the password you know in. Just every time you get a new website, let it save. Just let it do its thing. Hey, you want to save this? Sure. Uh, set it up on your phone. Set it up everywhere. You know the password. So if something bad happens, you can still get in. And then once you feel comfortable, then you can pull it off and start changing your passwords. And I will say at the very, very end of the day, you can always forget password. Yeah. They, you can always do it. I've never seen a site that says, oops, you forgot the password too many times. You need to come to us. They'll be more than happy to help you out without going over the phone. They'll just password reset you until you're done. So it's okay. You're not, you're not lost. Uh, it, trust me, I was apprehensive too. Um, 
And my my strategy for how I got to feel comfortable with password managers in the first place was um, I did exactly what you said, I installed. And every time I would manually type in a password, uh, at the time, LastPass would pop up and say, you know, do you want me to save this? And I'd be like, yeah, cool. And then it had all of my passwords saved. And I I never changed my my Google account password. So I knew as long as I had that and I was managing that one, I can randomize all these other passwords because I can just hit forgot password and get a link in my Gmail account. Um, Eventually, the password managers won the fight and my Google account password is also now managed in the password manager. Um, But, you know, you've always got that email backdoor. As long as you control that account, the password manager can, you know, change or suggest random gibberish for your password, and you can always still get in. The The big issue was, for me, was on the phone itself. So you have this device mm-hmm. on your phone, and so I use an iPad as my daily driver computer for for, for that purpose. And putting putting saving passwords, like, from websites is really difficult. So what I did is, at least with Bitwarden, it has a, a pop-up that says, says, would you like to generate a password? So you would have to hit generate password. Then it brings you to the screen. You have to fill in some stuff. The URI is there, the, the website. But you have to put the username and let it generate the password. I always like to copy the password before I use it because I don't trust it to copy. That's a me thing. That's not that, that's, that's me doing it twice and then, and then saving it. And it does work. So again, start off really, really slow. You have all your passwords, just just start putting them in. Like it's okay. The first step of, is admitting that you you need a password manager. You download it, it's fine. And then once you're there, you've instantly become more secure. Just right right off the bat there. And then as you change your passwords or you say you say, "You know what? I don't I can always use the I don't need this website all that often. I can get get it from the password manager." Trust me, Bitwarden is there. We have not found the thing that Bitwarden cannot install to. Maybe not the TV or the Roku, which is the next annoyance. I, I will say, I know we're selling password managers pretty hard, but honestly, it is one of my favorite pieces of technology because it makes me so lazy. Like, I, I don't know any of my passwords. I know one, and that's it. Everything else is completely randomized. And... I don't have to type anything in anymore. I go to the website. It's just there. It's done. Uh, I on, on the phone. So on the iPhone, I've got it set up. So when I unlock it once, it stays unlocked for you know a decent amount of time. But I can go to an app, hit login, and the text field pops up. There's a little button to go to Bitwarden. And then it automatically fills it in in the app. It's insane. It's super lazy and really secure. And that's just... Not something you see every day. Well, what we were talking about before is, so, okay, now you have these really long passwords. Then you get to an interface where you have to type this nonsense in. So the question before is whether it's Chrome or Firefox. Okay, so I'm going to the public library because that was the issue I was dealing with. I go to the public library. Now I need my password manager. I know I have my phone with me. I don't know what I would do. So if it's on my phone, I would have to copy the password. Or I can log, if I had it on Chrome, I could log into Chrome, but that feels a little shady. And then I'm thinking to myself, when was I the last time at the library where I had to use their computer for something? Like I have my computer. And I would say, and that's this goes next into the password rules later, but but if it's 20 characters, like if it was 64 characters, 100 characters, that's a pain in the neck. 20 characters, I feel like it'll take me a few minutes, but I'll be able to transfer over. So yeah. if you don't have the laptop with you, look, if you're on Chrome exclusively, like you don't want to pay. So Bitwarden is free, but you're exclusively on Chrome. You have Chromebook. You're, you, this is what you use. The Chrome built-in manager is, is perfectly acceptable. If you're that's on Safari totally all day, that's acceptable. Firefox is is great too they're all fine but just letting you know there's that lock-in where you have to use that browser and the second you move from it you don't have that password manager and i know what people do they don't remember which ones they saved and which ones they don't save them because they memorize them now they're putting this one in here and let's say you move to firefox for six months 
and you change your password, then you go back to Chrome, and then the old password is there. It, it, it becomes this problem. That's why we always push third part, like this third party of Bitwarden or one password there, because it is on every device, and that's where you go. It doesn't matter which computer you're on, that's where you go. So, more pushing for this. Yeah, it's trust me it will it will make you a lazier computer user and a safer one um but password rules regardless of of how you store your passwords whether you're writing them in the dollar store password logbook or using bitwarden or just saving it to chrome uh password rules generally suck you know hey you have to use these special characters but not these other ones and definitely not any characters with accent marks at all uh you need numbers between like 5000 and 7400 um and you need to have a capital of a united states state uh in the password somewhere so i have a question i don't know if you know this so when you do the password rules, it says you can only have certain special characters. Yep. I don't know where those certain come from. Is that the ASCII characters between the lowercase, the uppercase Z and the lowercase A? I don't think that's true. No, no. So those are usually related to some sort of archaic password storage system that is either shell interpreting or... Uh, maybe even direct SQLing a password into something else. Um, like scary SQL injection type vulnerability there. Uh, so yeah, it's sometimes it is because there is an even older system in the background somewhere that has to use that identifier to do transaction processing or something. Uh, a lot of older mainframes have weird rules like that. It's usually you... bullshit. Well, usually we're a clean show here, but right. <laughs> it's, so the problem becomes the problem becomes now, now you're in your password manager changing these rules up. I've sat there and I've tried yeah. to get passwords and it doesn't work. And I especially love when they accept when you have like a, I put it at 63. Usually my password count is 63 and it will accept it and I won't be able to log in. And yeah. turns out 63 was too many because it's eight to 20. And you're like, what? Why is it? Why is it eight to twenty? We've explained that it takes the password, it hashes it, it adds salt, it does a KDF function. We talked about that last show. But at the end of the day, it's it does this hashing function, and then other stuff. It doesn't matter what the password is. Like, I think Tom once told me years ago, you don't want to make your password like four gigabytes long, like. <laughs> I think you said somebody put through like random junk data. I mean, a hundred characters is probably overkill at that point. There were um, there were a lot of infosec people um, getting mad at people limiting the amount of characters you could have in a password. Uh, usually, some crazy arbitrarily low thing, like you know, a maximum of ten characters. Like that's that's way way too small. Um, but they were arguing for password length should be unlimited and. That is not true, uh, because if you feed four or five gigs worth of text uh, into a password hashing function, you can absolutely execute a denial of CPU resources on that host. So it should be big, but like a thousand characters big, not like a hundred gigs big. So, so, I mean, I didn't think of it that way. I was looking at it as 63, 64 that's characters is is acceptable at that yeah. point and then finally the problem is is now now you have this really gigantic gnarly password and you have to go and put it into your roku box and you're on your tv and you only have left right you hopefully have a qwerty keyboard and not the alphabetic keyboard which yeah. is another nonsense thing and that becomes really annoying and yes, you have to explain, you have to, you have to center yourself. You have to do meditation to say, I'm doing this to protect myself. Because it's really easy to make your password monkey one, two, three, and it will be done. However, you have to say, I'm doing this to protect myself. I don't want to have to change this later. I don't want to do this. Let's, let's, we'll do it once and that's it. Or we'll do it a couple times, but 
typing in the Wi-Fi password on 300 devices is never fun. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I feel like that that's that's really hard that they need to find a way. And I, I guess at Roku, they do that. If you log in, you go to the website, it says take a picture of the QR code and it brings it to your phone. And on your phone, you have LastPass. That I like. That Whatever that that's mechanism cool. is to QR code it, somehow they know. Even if you're not on the same Wi-Fi, they know something happened. Mm. And I do like that. That's what I wish happens more often. Yeah, it's it's like a one-time link. It's yeah. the, I guess, kind of functional equivalent of like a forgot password link, but through a QR code. And so, so yes, you have to deal with them. You hope that they tell you what the password rules are. Um, all I have of them seen... have a built-in generator, so. Yeah, yeah, use, use the password generator. Um, you know, length is kind of up to how you would feel about typing it in manually if you had to. Um, like if you have to read a password off a phone and type it into a computer. Um, yeah, I like 32 characters. I usually do, you know, everything, symbols, letters, numbers, all that stuff, capitals. Um, and just let the generator go crazy. Take the it's, first one. I will tell you this. Somebody told us way, way, way back when, longer is better. So have your mm -hmm. past phrase that you like dog, Fido, whatever, monkey, one, two, three, and then pad it with a whole bunch of special symbols. So put a whole bunch of periods, do 10, 15 periods in the beginning, 10, 15 periods at the end, and change it that way. As long as it's a different type set. So it's not just letters. It's, it's adding that extra thing. Because one of the things we didn't say at the beginning is that to break a password, you need to get it right 100% of the time. You can't get it 99% right. So yes, they're, they're getting better at trying to guess this. But at the end of the day, if you have a capital, lowercase, a capital, lowercase, a special character, a special symbol, and we said that, and sufficiently long, doing something with a whole bunch of commas or exclamation point periods or whatever, five sets of those, and then Fido's name, and then that again, that's going to build it out long, longer than you would have done, and it's easier to remember. So I remember that. I still use that for a lot of different things if I can't generate the password there. Yeah, it's it's always better to have a longer password over a shorter one. Uh, I, I Literally, the only benefits to a shorter password are easier to type, but worse in every other way. What I was hoping was that if we did two-factor, which is, again, a different show, you can have a really easy password because the two because the hardware thing would have made it much harder to break in. And turns out you still don't want that. It, yeah. Yes, but you don't want that. Like, two-factor two will protect you there, but what you're doing uh, is you're making it one factor. You are effectively logging in with a password that everyone knows uh, and a two-factor code that they don't know. So it's really one factor. I know. I, I just really wish that was the case where I can make my password 1234 and then have to put my hardware dongle in. So that, I was that was... Say, do I have... I do have my YubiKey on me. I'm pretty sure. You can I, I mean, do I that. have mine. You can do that. You could actually get a FIDO2 key and on a... I think extremely limited uh, number of sites <laughs> you can log in with just a key um, or that's the eventual goal. Well, yeah, that's what we're eventually getting to there with, with pass key support and everything else. That's, that's going to be a topic down the road because it is coming out, but that requires the server to handle it. And when you're asking yeah. users to do it or companies to do, it, it's going to take the last thing that I had that we have to worry about is sharing passwords. Because we all share passwords with somebody else for something. And it doesn't have to be in the ferry. It doesn't just have to be for Netflix. It could be your kid's login for something. It could be the doctor login for your kids. Usually involved. The word kids usually gets involved in there. But <laughs> it could be your post office pin for whatever. So you and your spouse or your roommates can get in. And, and again, another reason for password managers. Because one of the new features now is some sort of sharing ability if you're in the same group on bitward and you can share it one password has a spiffy, uh, spiffy feature where you can send it for a certain amount of time 
I, Tom and I like the signal route where you just put a disappearing message in and you do it. So there are ways, but sharing passwords also really helps because you have this really crazy one. They're honestly not going to remember it. So what you're doing disappearing messages for is just so that it gets deleted because I mean, that's it because they're not going to remember it. So, but again, another yeah. plug for the password manager. Yeah, I, I literally, we started doing that just so it didn't show up in the scroll back history. Like you don't want just passwords hanging out there. Um, and yeah, the, the signal route just works fine. Copy it out of signal, put it directly into Bitwarden and you are done. And I mean, I wish Bitwarden had a add two Bitwardens. You've just got a sharing request from a Bitwarden user, which you like to add it to your vault. I'm not, I'm just thinking really quickly. I mean, but that's what I would have liked. That, that would be nice. Um, and again, with Bitwarden, let's say you have somebody where they, you don't want them to know the password. There are ways to set it up where you can say, here, you can have access, but you don't know the password, which I really like. It's, I'm actually glad you brought that up because there are, that only protects against non-technical users. Correct. So with a little bit of JavaScript, you can actually look for basically the paste event or the insert event happening on that text box and monitor what goes in there. So yeah, it goes in as stars and the password manager might not let you see the password, but it still has to type it out somewhere or paste it into a password box in your browser that you control that has dev tools built in. So they can still get the password. I just like it because my friends, they're not that techie, but it, it does help. It's just another form of obfuscation that. Yeah. Anyway, but that's a little that's bit of theater, thing. but it's it's cool looking theater. So um, with that said, I think we're done. I mean, we're actually over time. We thought this would be a shorter show, but. Again, you want passwords, you have password questions, come join us in the Signal group. Again, we've spoken about this, we've touched on it, but here's an actual password show that you can send to somebody that, was, that just goes through everything about passwords. We're not going to sit here and say, this is good password, bad password. You know these rules, but how do we move on from there and why we have to do it? So with that said, I'm going to end it. I'm going to say good night, and I, will hope to, I hope to see everyone next week. Bye, everybody. See you, everyone.